Hey, I'm Ty Hensley, and this is Wrecked. Hello and welcome to Wrecked Podcast. I am Bunchu alongside my esteemed colleague and co-host, Chamber. Chamber, how you doing, buddy? Um, I'm going to tell you I feel okay. Uh, about five minutes ago, I <laughs> was on like a, I don't know how the, uh, what is, what's the war numbers? Like when you guys are going to war, like a uh, like I a think stage. like DEFCON 5. Yeah, maybe. so yeah. I was at that. Uh, my wife, uh, I was rushing back home from the grocery store to, to do the show. And uh, my wife called me on the way. She was going to pick up my kids at school, um, and she had she had let, she said she'd lost the house keys on the way to pick them up, like on the walk over. Uh, which you know, in a typical you know, uh, anybody listening, it's not that but big of a deal. You know, you can. You, however, for you know, for Ty, he probably hasn't listened to too many shows, or maybe not the last couple. <laughs> I, I, I just got robbed a couple of weeks ago and I had to change all my locks. Um, and my wife, within 12 days, loses the set of keys again. And so I was. So is this I, the only set of keys for the house? No, but it was the fact okay. that I had to go, you know, I would have technically had to have gone to get new locks and, you know, all that fun stuff. So uh, luckily, uh, she rushed back, kind of retraced her steps, found the keys miraculously. So. Uh, she lives to fight another day. <laughs> uh, that was that. You started telling me that right before we started going. I I didn't hear the end there, so I can't. That's pretty funny. Actually. So I'm, not st- I'm still at a three. I would say. Though. Okay. Well, we're gonna we're gonna calm you down here. We're gonna get you in the right mood for a podcast because you know without you uh, at, at t- tip top shape, this show is really nothing at all. So we need it. We need to get you back in that mindset. You just got me to a two. Just with that. There just you go. That alone. We just got to stroke the ego a little bit, you know. Uh, I've been doing this show with him for far too long, folks. So we have an awesome guest with us today. I'm actually super excited about this, uh, I, probably more so than Chamber, but Chamber's going to feel my excitement throughout this because... I'm excited for everybody. Yes, uh, we have we have a very special guest. Uh, we actually... So if you've listened to us, we've kind of touched a lot on, um, you know, sports news. Anytime somebody in the sports world that, uh, you know, comes up in Bitcoin or blockchain and, and we, we got in touch with, with somebody special the other day, uh, through my buddy actually. Uh, so we are talking today to Ty Hensley, former first round pick of the New York Yankees. Ty, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on guys. Thank you so much for joining us. So, uh, I mean, let's just get right into it. So the the way we actually got in contact with you was, was actually a funny story. So uh, one of my good buddies, we're both huge uh, Yankee fans, and uh, we're both like avid collectors and things like that as well. And so you had made a tweet about uh, Bitcoin, I don't know, maybe two weeks ago, and he tagged me in it. And I was like, oh, man, need to get him on the show. And I think within like five minutes, you're like, hell yeah, let's go. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. And so uh, even funnier story, which I did not realize at the time was, I guess, when you signed your Yankee contract or something, I guess what uh, the first ball you threw out into the crowd, you gave to my buddy, which was pretty crazy to think about. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was wild. I, I remember uh, I remember seeing that, or I saw his uh, Twitter mention. I was like, no way. Like, that's, that is just, <laughs> like I, that day, like, it's just such a blur to me. Like, I don't even hardly, like, you know, I remember, like, bits and pieces, but no, it's just, like, crazy that, like, he remembered that and everything, and I, uh, you know, that's definitely cool to kind of connect again. So, yeah, that's so, it's so strange. Uh, so that, but that's a pretty cool experience. Later, he was texting me. He had like, uh, he had like your rookie card. He texted me a picture of the baseball, all that stuff. So he was pretty pumped. That. <laughs> but that's pretty cool. So welcome to the show. We will uh, get into your whole story here. So you've had, uh, you know, just throughout your your life, you've had a, a pretty, I would say, more interesting life than most, uh, you know, going through 
uh, you know, baseball career and all of that stuff. So let's let's start with, I guess, how you went from okay, I am a first round draft pick for the New York Yankees to tweeting about Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I would just say, I, I mean, obviously, I, I grew up around baseball my entire life. Um, always a big interest of mine, so I don't think it was any surprise. But that's kind of what I ended up doing as far as that goes. But as far as Bitcoin, um, uh, my it's funny, my brother, like this is probably my younger brother. He's three and a half years younger than me. But this is probably 2000, um, I want to say 2014, maybe, maybe 2013. Yeah, it's one of those two years, but still pretty early on. I know we're also we're still really early in Bitcoin anyway, but like really, that's really early, really, really, really early on, right? What year was um, this? Did you say? I'm sorry, it was either 13 or 14. I, yeah, I that's uh, that's pretty early. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, so he was like, you know, <laughs> my brother and I are very different people. He's way cooler than I am, <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, uh, no, he was like, dude, you should you know you should invest some money into Bitcoin. I'm like, dude, what is like what is Bitcoin? Like what? You know, my brother has said and this is, uh, you know, this is fresh off of a, yeah, a this is major league signing, by the way. Exa- so you, exa- exactly. you have He's some like, funds maybe to invest. <laughs> exactly. And I'm like, I'm like, well, dude, what are you talking about? You're uh, you're like 15 years old. <laughs> what, 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 what do you know about Bitcoin, this Bitcoin? And, uh, you know, I, I didn't really pay too much attention to it. And just kind of we just kind of moved on uh, from that. But it's just funny to look now, look back now. I can't even remember what, I, what the price was in Bitcoin then. But it, you know, obviously, <laughs> obviously it pales in the comparison to what it is right now. But you know, just hindsight looking back, you're like, holy, like yeah, holy ima- like, like wait, right, imagine if you did, if, imagine if you listened yeah, to him. Does he bug yeah. you about that? Does oh he... yeah, we, we we talk about it every now and then. But um, uh, no, so really, I think um, like a lot of people, you know, I've I've had money in the stock market for uh, you know since i was since i signed um uh my contract or whatever but uh um i kind of really got interested in bitcoin because of a buddy um that my brother and i both have um from uh the town where we're from edmund uh he ended up moving to dallas and making like a i think it's like opening up his own firm and he like kind of talked about bitcoin like all the time and you know you see something enough you know obviously you're going to have a little bit of an interest in it you know what i mean for sure like, so then i just you know i'm a, i'm a kind of guy like i'm an ocd thinker so like you know once i once i get get on something it's pretty tough for me to stop so um i you know kind of went down that rabbit hole a little bit and started reading books about it started you know started searching the internet start, started watching youtube videos and um i just really say over especially over like the last year um I've definitely become extremely interested in, in it, kind of what, you know, the principles behind it, what it has to offer. And, um, you know, it's just been really fun to kind of educate myself as much as I can. Like, I just, I'm like, I like to, I like to be a sponge, you know, with everything, not just, not just, you know, baseball, but anything financial, anything business. Like I just, you know, I have so many interests that aren't, uh, that aren't baseball. I just, I, you know, I like to, to know as much as I possibly can. Yeah, that's awesome. So when did uh, so when did the I guess the, this new the second obsession start? So your brother your brother tells you about it in 2014. Your brother's probably owning a private island at some point now, <laughs> and he's rubbing it in your face from afar. Yeah. And you're like, maybe now I should look into this. Yeah. <laughs> so so when does the second obsession start here? Um. You're talking about with yeah, like with, when did you start like really picking up your picking up books and learning about it and all of that? So that is that yeah, more I would, recently? I would just, yeah, it was definitely recently. I'd say probably with it was just within the last year, um, uh, for sure. I mean, especially like to the point where I would you know mention it to my friends, family, and trying to encourage people that I you know know and care about to like, hey, you need to have some exposure to this. Like, you know, it's like a. I think it's a fantastic hedge against our uh, our dollar yeah so, no, so. i would agree i got a question so it sounds like you have some skin in the game already um mm-hmm. when it comes to bitcoin sure do um are you, uh, i was going here next here, yeah. <laughs> are you dabbling have you uh have you uh have you have you tamper or have you kind of messed around with any of the altcoins like ethereum or yeah uh, um, you know, those kind of things yeah I, you know i think um the more that I kind of dove into it and learned about it, I was like, I kind of looked into that, like, you know, 
Ethereum seems, you know, pretty strong. Seems like uh, it has a great, you know, because obviously the thing that puts value into something is whether or not, you know, people are interested in it. You know what I mean? And obviously, obviously people are extremely interested in that as well. You know, um, Chainlink, you know, other... Ooh. Um, Ooh, a li- are we a link marine? We got a link marine on no, our hands. No, yeah. I, I'm not. You know, I currently I'm, I'm only I'm only in Bitcoin, and I'll tell you why. It's because it's not it's not. I mean, obviously, I think that you can make I think you can make your fortune through trading altcoins. You know what I mean? But like, I think in the grand scheme of things, it's like if you're gonna you know if you're in crypto, obviously the goal is just to, for me, in my opinion, is to accumulate as much Bitcoin as you can. You know what I mean? Because I think at the end of the day. You know, if you really believe in the system and everything, it's like, it's just time. You know what I mean? You're just going to have to get as much as you can and wait. And, you know, I, who knows, like, where that'll end up going in the future, uh, whether or not, you know, it'll become some sort of a reserve currency. Personally, I don't believe, I don't think that that's what will happen. I think it'll be more so, hey, there's only 21 million that are ever going to be minted. And uh, you don't want to be the guy that doesn't have some, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, hell yes. <laughs> so like, I'm like, I, I just think it's more of like, you know, it gets compared to gold, but it's pretty tough to say like, you know, gold has a certain amount because we still don't know how much gold we haven't, you know, mined it all. Now mining has definitely slowed down, but we definitely haven't mined it all. And, you know, once we start mining asteroids, I mean, within the next time, <laughs> I'd yes. probably say 20, 20 years, I would imagine. Um, you know, there's no telling. There's no telling like what the value of gold will be. I mean, obviously, the value of gold is not going up. It's just our dollar that's absolutely deteriorating. But yeah, um, no, I don't know. I just, you know, I, I personally, I just, I believe in Bitcoin because of the principles behind it. You know, we don't know. There's not a fixed amount of Ethereum. Um, I know there's fixed amounts of other, other, uh, other coins, but I, you know, I, I think. There's a reason it was first, and it's, uh, you know, it's, there's a reason that I think, it, like, especially now, like, probably has the least volatility, you know what I mean? So, Which is uh, crazy to say Especially something that. That, that, <laughs> that was definitely considered one of the most volatile things ever. Like, it, you're looking at markets now, you're like, hell, Bitcoin's probably my safest bet right now, you know, so. Yeah, that's super interesting. I think, uh, first of all, Stay. I, I'm with you. Get out. Don't <laughs> dabble in this altcoin bullshit. Because <laughs> well, what Ty basically said is he basically just said I'm not a degenerate idiot. Yeah, gambler. right. Like like yeah. Chamber and Bunchu is exactly <laughs> right. That's, I, that's what I took away from that. So so Ty, a little backstory here. Uh, you know, Bitcoin's had a a bear market for you know the last couple years since that really like blow off top in 2017 or 2018 yeah yeah right so uh you know i have personally been the altcoin bear throughout that whole time and i was you know only holding bitcoin and you know chamber (laughs) through and through has been the altcoin whisperer or you know and he's been whispering sweet altcoin nothings in my <laughs> ear. And then finally, just finally, in the last maybe I would say six weeks, uh, you know, he got me back in with all the the DeFi craze that's been going on, the decentralized finance craze. And mm-hmm. so I, I swapped out, I, I would say, I mean, a pretty decent amount of my Bitcoin uh, into Ethereum so I could, yep. you know, try to do exactly what you said, make my fortunes in altcoins so i could essentially accumulate more bitcoin and what happened is i lost all of it instead (laughs) and now i'm literally down i have to i'm not even kidding you every day is a new low for me and i let's let's see what we're at today chamber and i there's no one to blame but uh chamber really (laughs) i was gonna say myself and then i really just took a sec back and uh you you know who the yeah exactly you're 100 percent correct it is absolutely my fault Uh, let's see the two biggest bags i have today are down 17.4 percent and 20.2 percent so uh and no sign of of the world stock market they call that a uh a complete and utter collapse (laughs) right well yeah you know this is just another day for crypto exactly so uh but i i'm with you right because look Look, it's you gonna trade. Come back around, man. Well, we'll it's see. But if not, you know, if not, I guess lesson but, but, learned. I, I my actions are clearly cyclical. And, uh, but well, by the uh, time it does, man, you never know. Bitcoin could be a little crazy out of reach. Yeah, know. that's well, that's the problem, kind of right? And then I won't zone, be able you know to what? get any. <laughs> so, uh, but I think that's that's right, right? We're like, 
you know, in the grand scheme of things, Bitcoin is uh, the the big move, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's Absolutely. that's the especially for like what you said, where we're talking more about okay, Bitcoin being sound money, right? Or um, the a hedge to the dollar, or you know something, you know, with with the principles of the financial freedom and all of that stuff, as opposed to as so if those are your beliefs doesn't surprise me at all that it's bitcoin and bitcoin only right and then then you know i think there's another camp and chamber you can uh uh, you know weigh in on this i would say the other camp is okay it's the blockchain crowd right and the blockchain crowd is where you get into okay here's all these other projects that can do you know x y and z smart contracts things like that and and that's where you know i think you see the the crossover into some of these altcoins other than the fact that you know you can make multiples of right sure. would you agree with that or disagree chamber i would agree 100 percent. i i think like you mentioned it's six cyclical we were i think we were speaking another episode uh the other day where you know bitcoin's doing its thing and you know ty you mentioned you know it's, it's probably been a good year since you've been in it i got a mm-hmm. call from my i got a call from my dad today Uh-oh. um <laughs> and, and he's like oh you know so and so is talking about bit like one of his normie friends was talking about Bitcoin and he's like, Oh, my son's got a podcast. And you know, oh, no. the only time he ever, the only time he ever, uh, you know, talks about, uh, about the podcast is when, Oh no, this is, this is a recipe for disaster. This is Tell him, top- please don't listen yeah. to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's happening right now. I mean, we're how, what, what are we about three or four weeks away from Thanksgiving for you guys? Yep. Yep. I yep. mean, it's kind of, st- that's kind of starting, right? It happened in 2017. Yep. Thanksgiving yeah, Christmas, was, you're all, Thanksgiving, Rich. yeah, Thanksgiving was the catalyst where, you know, people were getting together, they were talking about it, and then mm-hmm. November, December, you know, we had an explosion of new money come in, yeah. and it seems like I'm you're getting the whispers of, you know, the people that aren't in crypto or aren't in Bitcoin talking about it now. Uh, I saw there's a ticker, I think, I want to say it was Fox Business News, uh, or maybe... Oh, yeah, they're putting, uh, it as, they're putting it on, on, the, on the ticker now as currency, which is, absolutely. Which is awesome. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, so it's like CNBC, uh, it's yeah. it's starting yeah. to happen. Uh, in my opinion, I don't think all coins are going to be doing much of anything uh, for for a little bit. I think Thanks. Bitcoin. Uh, sorry, bunch. Uh, <laughs> not, think, not, uh, not until we hit our next top, anyway. Well, know. I think I think I think that's exactly it. I think we're going to have. Um, I I think my my guess is we probably you know track towards all time high. We're not that far, yeah. <laughs> which is insane. Um, and if we can make kind of like a top uh, or, you know, settle on top of the prior all time high and kind of rest there for a bit, we yeah, might be able to chill shows, out. Show some, some consolidation there. Be nice. Exactly. Uh, and then and then we could see some we could see some big altcoin, um, you know, developments and pumps and, and whatnot after the fact. But I mm-hmm. think right now it's it's really Bitcoin, maybe Ethereum and then everything else is going to be on hold um, or get sucked dry uh, for Absolutely. at least the, you know, it's funny. A little it's bit. funny you brought that. You brought it up, like how, you know, you, you said your dad, you know, is talking about it, you know, with, with people at work. But like, you know, it's like I just got my parents into it, you know, and the fact that my dad, like, my dad, like, still has an iPhone four. You know what I mean? Like, he has, <laughs> he has no idea what he's doing, like, with anything technology. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and like, the fact that they, like, they're talking about Bitcoin and like interested in like what it has to offer like people that i'm like you know trying to trying to share this with is like people are like starting to like be interested about it because like i think like you can see like just you know money money obviously talks you know when you see like bigger bigger dollar amounts and like you see all these uh institutions funneling you know their assets into bitcoin square paypal micro strategy you know like it's just like dang sailor the bitcoin bull yeah the guy who freaking hated it what four three three four years ago you know what i mean and like i don't know it's just it's it's, it's there's no telling there's no telling like the so how'd next, you how'd year. you get your dad into it what was the selling point because this is something we talk about all the time is is like what's it going to be for to take to get you know 
I would say just people that aren't in it now, as well as, you know, kind of the older generation, because yeah, my dad, like my dad. People yeah, like right. And parents, I got my yeah. dad into it as well. Um, but it was a hard, I, I felt like that was a hard sell, uh, but mm-hmm. eventually it worked. But so like, what was, what was the catalyst there for, you know, your dad or your parents to be like, okay, I'm paying attention now. I don't know. I, I think I, you know, I, I think you can kind of like look at the statistics and stuff like, only half the country, like not even half the countries invested in the stock market. Well, at least before this year, I, I, I imagine that number is quite a bit higher uh, now. But like, I agree. But like, you know, I think that generation, like my dad's generation, older people, like their their generation was really like they all they all harped on saving money. You know what I mean? And like, sure, like saving is like I, I you got you have to have to save a little bit. You know what I mean? But like. You know, saving money is not going to help make you money. It's just deteriorating if it's just sitting in, a, you know, a bank account. And I think, Preach. I think that, I don't know. I, I think older people seeing younger people have success with, like, investing money. You know, like obviously, like, not having to essentially go to a, a nine to five job to make money. You know, and I think like, wow, like, there's they're essentially looking at it as like. And this is why I try to explain to my dad. I was like, listen, like, think of it, think of it like if you have money in a savings account, you're getting what, maybe 3% interest, maybe, I don't, you know. And I think that's our, high. <laughs> right. Maybe. And our, our, our dollar is, you know, going down faster than that. So you're really losing money um, or losing value of your money, right? And um, I was like, you know, think of it this way. Think of like, instead of putting your money here, like think of putting it in another savings account into something that's going to like, you know, increase in value. You know what I mean? Just think of it like you're putting it into another savings account and you just got to let it, you know, let it do its thing. Yeah. So I don't know. I think maybe just think, maybe just the kind of understanding, just uh, wanting to understand has definitely been the the thing for him. Was it hard to convince them that, you know, it's not like, tangible like it's not something that's <laughs> you can't tangible see it, that like, you like can't hold in your hand it. yeah right exactly um, well i think i think when i like told them or sat them down and explained them like listen like i you know i'm not necessarily like i'm not a, a money manager by any means at all but i'm you know i'm a fairly fairly educated smart guy um and you know i've done my my due diligence i've done my research and anything i've done in my life you know like i've always like I'm like I said, I'm extremely OCD and like, I got to make sure that I like, if I, if I'm really wanting to do something, I try and be the best at it. You know what I mean? So I think my dad and I kind of have similar personalities in that regard. And like, I just, I don't know. I, I did my homework and I kind of showed them like the way that I, you know, I store everything. It's like, you know, I store my stuff, you know, in a cold wallet, um, you know, that I, that I take with me everywhere. So, um, you know, I, you know, I just kind of show them like, this is, this is like away from the internet. It can't be hacked. You know, only, only I have access to this, blah, 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 you know, just kind of showed him, showed him all the ins and outs. And I think like the more that I could just back up what I was saying, I think he was definitely, definitely more convinced if that makes sense. I'm no. under, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, I'm under the opinion. Um, Cause we talk about that a lot. Like, you know, how do you explain it to somebody, you know, your friends, your family, and you know, explain to them. Oh, you know, oh, this is blockchain, and it's decentralized, and it's on mm-hmm. these computers. And I agree that that is a difficult conversation. Yeah. And it's kind of it can be difficult to kind of get them to see the you know get them to see the light uh, as far as you know what the value is. But I honestly think the 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 hardest conversation comes after that, where they say, yeah, that does make sense. I do want to get involved, and you have to explain to them that it's not like the stock, you know, it's not like buying stocks. It's not like buying, you know, mutual funds. It's not like a bank. You have to protect this asset yourself. Yep. You are 100 with, your life. Going with that. Yeah. Yep. That, I was going the same spot with that. So was the, was the custody piece difficult? Like, you know, there's things obviously like Coinbase where you can just have an account and it can sit mm-hmm. on there, but you know, the saying not your keys, not your Bitcoin. Right. That's so, right. um, did, you know, they buy into the cold wallet piece? Did, uh, was that difficult? Well, they did because I just told them that's how it's going to be. <laughs> you know, I, was like, <laughs> I was like, listen, I'm not going to let you guys, you know, let you all get upset at me for something that easily, you know, you can control. And, you know, I think it was just more so I think they were just receptive and in, in, in listening, listening uh, to me on that. So, I, sure. you know, I think it, it differs from 
from person to person. Um, but I think if you can, if you sound convincing in your argument, you know what I mean? You, you have a passion for it. You stand behind it. You have a reason why, like, Hey, it's pretty tough to, pretty tough to argue with the guy that, you know, has some conviction behind what he says, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, bringing it back to, you know, the sports world a little bit, I'm sure you're still, you know, kind of dialed into the sports world and things like that. So I think, you know, we're seeing some, uh, you know, prominent, uh, sports people come out and, uh, talk about Bitcoin. You know, one of the bigger ones that I could think of is Russell Okun for the, in the NFL. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, what's your opinion on that? I mean, as, as far as, uh, do you well one do you kind of see that as as a trend that you know some of these guys are are getting into it more um or two you know do you see it as something maybe that they definitely should consider because you know we unfortunately have seen many stories with you know athletes getting huge contracts and not being responsible with their money and mm-hmm. not having anything left by the time they're done playing so um, I just uh, curious on your opinion on those things yeah um well i just think you know like we like we were talking about with the with the older generations i would say i think it's just a lack of financial education you know i think i think um i mean how did i get into it you know what i mean it's like i had to teach myself um i I saw something i i wanted to learn you know i think it's just i think you know athletes especially like they put their you know their focus their head you know everything they can into you know being the best they can in sports and it's almost like or whatever sport they're playing it's almost like they don't quite have time to or think they don't quite have time to like understand you know you know how how can my money help make me money you know what i mean it's like sure obviously you 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 know if you sign for a lot of money you typically want to have somebody who knows what they're doing take care of that for you but you know if if i'm going to sit here and be honest like I, i personally like I want to know what's going on with my money. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I want to, I want to like, if, if somebody's going to put my money somewhere, I want to know like why, you know what I mean? I want to, I want to know the why to everything. Um, but yeah, I just I think it goes back to just a lack of lack of education. Um, and I think, uh, I don't know. I, I think, uh, as a whole, I think people are getting better and I think there's definitely more outlets now for people to be educated on it. But, um, I, I really do wish uh, it was part of our our school system. You know, I, I do wish that uh, or any financial education, it, really. Exactly. <laughs> like there, there should be there should be financial literacy tax or uh, um, taxes uh, classes, and there should be you know uh, tax education classes, like kind of how that stuff works. You I'm know, like one hundred percent agree. With you. you know, like, I I mean, it just all these things you just you you don't ever learn about unless you want to learn about it yourself you know what i mean so i (laughs) i think i think athletes you know uh you know any job any person that has a job it's like it's just kind of how you're hardwired to um you know do things and it's just i don't know i think if you if you just want to if you want to learn i think the opportunities are are endless for sure that's awesome yeah chamber what do you what else you got well i was gonna say um just in general talking about athletes and you talk about you know you have you you want to be able to keep a keep an eye on what's happening be involved in those financial decisions and i was just reading an article the other day um it might have been on twitter it might have been uh a bunch, you know, uh, Pomp's brother uh, that has like uh, does some like sports stuff on Twitter. You ever yes. see this? Yes. I think he was doing one on Magic Johnson that it might have been him that did it, and they were just talking about um, Magic Johnson's total NBA career earnings versus his net worth. Today. Completely pales in the comparison to what he's made off off the. Uh, off <laughs> it was the like board. a. Jo- it's a joke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And it's that's like, Magic it's Johnson. Like not even, not even ten percent. Uh, oh, it, it, wow. I, it was, it was maybe a percent. Yeah. It was maybe a percent. Wow. It, it was crazy. I was just like, yeah, because he, you know, he, he. Well, that's uh, because uh, look, money makes money if you know what absolutely. you're doing with it, right? Absolutely. Or you know, you and and that's a hundred percent true. Like money and patience. <laughs> yeah, I money, do have a, patience, I, compounding, I, all that. You know, I do have a follow up baseball question though. Okay, uh, for both of you guys, uh, it's just called a, it's, it's called a walk. Chamber. Oh, is it okay? <laughs> Four balls. Why, did, why, did, why is it called a balk? No, I'm just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> could they not come up with a better word? Um, no, uh, I uh, I'm a big Los Angeles Lakers fan. Um, well, and, you must be pretty uh, happy right now. I am pretty happy right now. Are you but trying I, to be a Dodgers fan after last night? Well, or what? That's, what, that's where the question comes in. So um, I wear 
uh, because there's no good L.A. Laker hats. Oh, so you wear a Dodgers hat. I wear a black and white Dodger hat. Okay. Um, and I wear it, you know, I wear it pretty frequently. Um, I, I, I like it. You know, it's just, it's a way to represent my other team, but with a better, you know, <laughs> a better hat. Um, but well, first I of did, all, that means the Lakers I, need better hats. They do. They do. Not, and purple and gold is hard to match up with stuff a lot of the times, too. Um, but I didn't wear the hat today because uh. I didn't want people thinking that I was a bandwagoning or just, you know, uh, or just a fan. I didn't want to a- answer any Dodgers related questions because I believe they won the World Series yesterday, correct? They, sure they did. did. Yeah. That, so that's I- his Canadian showing. <laughs> <laughs> so so like, you you just didn't want anyone in Canada to know to think you were a baseball fan. That's uh, really I didn't I didn't want to I didn't want to get asked any questions about, you know, who was hitting and uh, I did see one highlight the other day. I don't think it was from uh, yesterday's game. I think it was from a couple of games ago where, or it might have been the series before, where that guy hit like a, a, a home run and had this, like a nice strut. I forget who it was, but it was an amazing home run. And he just kind of strutted. Um, oh, the, the uh, I think it was Max Muncy's, pit, the, where he just oh, pimped that goodness. one out. Yeah, yeah, the pimp, yeah it was like a pimp, it was It was that was the only <laughs> baseball I watched this year. And I'm like, Dude, that's pretty awesome. He <laughs> pimped, I, as soon as he baseball. hit that. As soon as he hit that, I was like, "Oh my god, that is he pimped that out so hard." <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the, the that's all I've seen this year. Ty, would you uh would you would you have thrown at him on his next at bat if he did that uh, to you? Well, you know, uh, I I think I don't think you can you can uh, take vengeance in a World Series uh, in a World. Yeah, series, that's right. There's too but, much at stake. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I I don't know. I I think I, I think you're starting to see celebrations on both sides. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, you look at like guy like. Uh, Bruce Star Gratterall, you know the oh yeah, believer, you know every time it's like every time he got a like a pop out or something, he was screaming and, and it was like, <laughs> listen, like, I mean, you know, I think I think there's a time and a place to get fired up, you know, when you do something huge like Muncie did, like, hey, you know what, you just freaking pretty much won the game for your team, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I mean, but come on, like, we're, we're we 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 celebrating little like you know and like another guy for the Rays like you know walked and was. You know, tripping, <laughs> tripping the pitcher, and I'm like, look, that's what, fantastic. Like, what like, I'm gonna be that's honest, right. I, that's I ball have, four. Yeah, like, I kind of, I definitely have like a temp, a temper on the field. Like I, I, I have a quick, quick trigger out there. I mean, it's just like, I, I don't think it's indicative of who I am off the field. But you know, it's like you, you're able to get on there and kind of be somebody you're not for a little while. And um, I don't know, like I, that, I would definitely have a problem with it during the game and it, or right when it happened. I think I would try and handle it right then and there, but. Um, you know, I, I don't know. It, it's a world series. Emotions are high. Um, hell, you just, you just won the game for your team. You, you, you should be fired up. You know what I mean? So, so chamber, what was your question? Is it- should, should, so, uh, should I, uh, continue wearing the hat for the remainder or for the next, or, you know, whatever you're a, month you're a lakers fan you gotta wear i hat. know so I, so I was online last night and i'm like oh fuck i gotta get a laker hat i guess because <laughs> i didn't think i didn't think it was fair for me to wear a dodger hat for at least for the next four I mean, weeks it just says la on it you know what i mean so like it does it does and it's not dodger blue either so I it is not dodger blue oh, yeah. Well, then, yeah there you go no one okay i, no I one's think you're know the safe difference. Okay. Yeah. All right. I appreciate that. I, I um, think you're okay. I respect you're both okay. of your baseball opinions. <laughs> you can all, if if somebody asks you, you could just you know pretend you just hit a home run and just pimp at them, just yeah. like strut away, <laughs> staring them down. You know, you could just give them your own home run trot around. Now, I, I do have close to Toronto. Was that pimp walk uh, better than the uh, Batista, Batista, the Batista one? Yeah, no, the Batista definitely, bat flip. Definitely not. Definitely not. I think uh, that Batista bat flip oh, that, was that's like... A, that's iconic, man. That's yeah, a, that was the flip heard around the world. Like that yeah. that bat flip like started the resurgence of this whole, you know, it started the whole debate that we literally just had. That wasn't awesome. called a, I wouldn't call it a bat flip. That was a bat launch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's that, good to know. What, wasn't that, that was in a playoff game, uh, though. Sure. Oh, yeah. Sure yeah, was. that was a playoff game. So ALDS, yeah. Yeah. Say? I can't well, was it against the Yankees? It might have been. Uh, oh God, I can't remember. I think it might have been against the Rays. I, I be actually, wrong. I think you you might be right there. But all right, so uh, all right. Well, now while we're on the topic of of baseball here, give me your favorite and least favorite unwritten rule. Chamber, are you familiar with the unwritten rules of baseball? 
I mean, I played baseball fairly competitively until I was, you know, 16 or 17 years old. So. Okay, so yeah. the unre- so you know, like we just talked about, is you know, th- throwing at a guy for hitting a home run is right. you know one of like an unwritten rule. So, Ty, what would be your favorite and least favorite unwritten rule of baseball? Hmm, my favorite unwritten rule. I would say my favorite unwritten rule is that you, uh, yeah, here's a good one. You get one chance to hit somebody. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna try and drill somebody, obviously you don't go for the head, but you go you know somewhere mid back and and upper leg, you know. But you miss, you just go right back to pitching. You don't. That's try it. And, you shot you your shot. And, yeah, you don't keep trying to hit somebody. The message has been received. You know what I mean? So I like um, that one. Uh, yeah, I like that. That one, uh, my least favorite. Um, you know, I, I I don't know if there's like a least favorite unwritten rule. I, I would. How about how about just a least favorite rule now you know i think remember how like we used we used to watch baseball without the replays and stuff and i'm not saying the replays aren't bad but you know like if you a guy was turning a double play or um a guy uh you know first baseman came out the you know the ball beat the runner you know he yep. was always out you know what i mean yep. and now it's like you know we're we're taking all this time to look into see if this tag was exactly there well blah, there was blah. that there was that one the other day where they looked at uh i think it was yandy diaz who uh or margot who slid into third margot yeah it was yeah margot, and he yeah. literally he obviously beat the throw and then they went and did frame by frame on did his body stay on the bag the whole time mm-hmm. and i think that's a perfect example of what yeah, you're talking it, about it, exactly i mean it's yeah. like well he you know he, he beat the ball like I don't know. It's just I think it's been a thing that's kind of slow. You know, the the goal of baseball has been to speed the game up, and I mean that really just <laughs> kind of kind of slows it down. And I think it just it kind of takes the the human element out of it, where it's like you know you want it, it's fun to see guys get fired up like when they get pissed off that it's not they you know that it didn't go their way. You know, it's fun to watch managers run out there. You know, what I mean, like that's just like, at the umps. Yeah, yeah, it's just part of the <laughs> it's part of the game, and I think it's just I I, I really do. You know, as much as you hate it sometimes, you just got to love that, like, you know, that human factor where it's like, oh, like, shit, he was wrong, you know, but, you know. Chamber, do you have a favorite unwritten rule? Um, My least favorite, I don't know if it's a, I guess it's a, it might be a written rule, but the fact that I can't get drinks after, like, the seventh inning, <laughs> like, that I'm not a fan of. Like, I forget. Sometimes I go I go to baseball games, uh, you know, in, in a typical year. make a plan to get home. <laughs> How come I can't get, like, I, every, and it happens every time. Uh, I, I, I usually go once a year, and I try to get a beer in the eighth inning, and it's like, oh, shit. Um, <laughs> never, I'm never able to. So um, I, I would say that's my least favorite rule. I feel... Full throttle, uh, rate. and what happens if it goes extra innings? Like, come on, yeah, that's you it's know, really, that's, the, you know, hydrated, that's the real you know? gamble. That, exactly, that's yeah. the real gamble you take. Though, uh, I would say mine, uh, one of my, one of my favorites. I, let me know your opinion of this one. Is uh, you don't talk to the pitcher during a no hitter. Okay. I like that one. <laughs> uh, is that teammates? Is that teammates? Don't well, talk to them? when we when we were growing up, it was always teammates too. I'm not sure if that's that applies in you know the professional level or you know the other is the announcer uh, won't say it, but then they always do, and it always just like clockwork. The announcer brings up yeah. the no hitter, and the next guy gets a hit. So, yep. I mean, it, it's science, man. <laughs> <laughs> My least favorite, I think, are the ones where like. Uh, you remember at the beginning of the playoffs uh, where what was uh, Tatis was swinging away on 3-0. He hit the oh, grand yeah, slam, was, and everybody was giving him shit no. for that. I was so – that was ridiculous. It's like just because – they were up like seven runs or something, Chamber, and they were giving the guy crap for hitting a home run because they were up too much. What was he supposed to do? He's supposed to take a 3-0 or a 3-0 pitch with the – I think it was bases loaded and, you know, basically the walk? asking him to walk. Yeah. Ah, come yeah, on. No, we're here is, to win, guys. Is, yeah, it's uh, dumb. Especially, yeah. especially uh, you know, uh, was this still regular season or was this playoff? I think it was a playoff game. I thought it was yeah, in the well, first. What's, I mean, come on. Like, what, what are we trying to are we trying to just exactly. let him not embarrass him? It's a playoff game. Let's go win. Exactly. Then the next day he stole third up six runs, and that was yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's another <laughs> unwritten rule. Uh, yeah. I, you see, that one That one is a little, a little uh, aggressive in my opinion. You know, I mean, well, as a pitcher, just, I'm sure you hate that. There's just no reason. That, well, there's just no reason to steal steal third when you're already in scoring position and you're up a yes. crap ton of runs. But like, 
because if you get thrown out of third, you look like an idiot. But, right. <laughs> uh, but swinging 3-0, I mean, hell, that's a pitcher's fault. You know what I mean? Like that's if I true. Get a guy at 3-0 and he hits a bomb off me, like, hell, that's that's my fault, you know? That's true. That's true. Uh, all right, Chambers, shall we? Uh, you got any other Bitcoin crypto mm-hmm. questions for I have for nothing. Ty here? I have nothing. I, I could listen to you guys talk baseball all day. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's get to let's get to the wrecks here. Riggity, riggity, wreck, son! So, uh so Ty, we we are wrecked podcast, so we often talk about you know either our um, most wrecked crisp crypto stories. Uh, so if you've ever if you ever have a, a crypto or Bitcoin wrecked story of you know it could be anything. We've had we had. Uh, are you familiar with the the Mount Gox crash or the Mount Gox hack? Yes. We had a, a guy that was on here that we're buddies with. He lost a thousand Bitcoin in the Gox hack. Oh uh, my god! We had another guy on here that was lost. Did Bitlord lose what seven hundred Ethereum in a single trade? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so like so, you know, crazy stuff like that. Uh, or do you have a, a real life wrecked story? So um, you know, anything that's happened to you in your life where you're just like, oh man, that was pretty wrecked. Uh, yeah, so I, you I can, can choose think, can one, both, a, or either. I can think of a great one actually uh, with real life. Uh, well, I guess it's all real life because it's real money. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's right. But, but, uh, We're just a bunch of larpers. So <laughs> something, something that happened to me. Well. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if y'all are familiar with my background, but like, you know, I've been, I've definitely gone through the ringer with injuries, but like, yes. I had Tommy John in 2015, had to have it again in 2016 because my first surgery didn't work. Then I had to have a screw, a screw put in my elbow in 2017 because like I had another like issue in there. So within 36 months, I, I had three elbow surgeries and you know, I would pretty wow. much call that getting wrecked. <laughs> I was uh I would say that is yeah. that is true. You've had uh, a lot of misfortune as far as injuries go from yeah. for your career. I was telling I think before we were supposed to go on yesterday, I uh I was telling Chamber that the the exact same thing. I was like, "Yep, Tommy John, Tommy John hip surgery." <laughs> like yeah. So that so what like, you know, as a professional athlete and somebody who obviously had you know was a very high draft selection by the yankees and stuff like that how does that you know play a toll on you on you know what you know what you're going to do next in your career or what you're thinking during the time and all of that kind of stuff yeah well i mean definitely during the time i, I think it just kind of was a mixture of my wife my brother my mom my dad you know trying to keep convincing me like hey you know like you can keep chasing this as long as you want to blah blah i think you just kind of you just kind of fall out of love with something you've definitely been in love with forever um so it's definitely very challenging mentally more than anything um and it just kind of i don't know you you just kind of lose your identity a little bit because you know like if you put so much effort and time into something um you know you want to you know you know what you're capable of it's like well, that was that's been my identity my whole life. So you just kind of go through this little identity crisis, I'd say. And I think, well, you know, in the same sense, I would say, if I didn't have all those things happen to me, you know, I I wouldn't be with my wife right now. Um, I, um, let's see, what else? Uh, that sounds like a wife that doesn't lose the keys very much. I exactly. exactly. <laughs> and, uh, that's funny. And, I'm out of one, by the way. <laughs> You're out of one. Okay. Yeah, good. for those keeping score at home. Uh, she uh, or um, so, you know that I think it allowed me to kind of take some interest in in things away from the field as well, uh, which which definitely is a blessing in disguise. Uh, but I don't know, really, it just it just changed kind of like who I was. Um, I think I I always define myself as a baseball player, and I think a little bit I still do. But um, you know, uh, you know, I'm still I'm still chasing it. I I just I just personally came off my best year as a professional um this past year so you know i did really well back to norm you know back to like being really good um so i'm kind of excited to see you know who i end up signing with uh in these next few months and who you know what team i go to spring training with so um that's awesome um yeah hopefully no, it's so, the jays uh yeah i honestly i could i could care less who it is <laughs> at this point you know? just, i just want somebody to just give me give me an opportunity again so you look sink or swim you know um and I can live with that, you know what I mean? So, um, but no, I, I think, uh, I think everything kind of happens for a reason, um, as far as that stuff goes. And I think, um, 
maybe I had to learn some lessons and maybe I had, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it was. I probably never will, but you know, at this, you know, at least I can be an inspiration for somebody else who, you know, maybe this next youngster that has to go through some, some terrible stuff and, um, you know, give him hope that there, you know, that there's light at the end of the tunnel. You know what I mean? So, um, That's I think awesome. there's just more motivation than just myself involved. So it definitely, you know, it just changes kind of who you are, but no, I'm, uh, I can't believe I'd say it, but like, I'm definitely grateful for all the, all the, you know, for lack of better terms, all the shit that happened to me. So that's awesome and i we obviously wish you the best of luck in the the spring we hope uh we hope you do obviously get signed somewhere i I think you know with uh the way the game's going and so many teams having all these relievers and specialists i think you know Mm -hmm. now more than ever they they're signing you know as many pitchers as possible absolutely yeah uh i mean i'll definitely get a ty hensley uh jersey hell yeah (laughs) i don't care care where you play i'll get Uh, one you You also you also got to get the team hat absolutely you guys have t-shirts or like shirts for your podcast or anything it's funny you say that we're in the midst of um of getting uh getting some some new ones done we we did we we did for a long time i'm gonna i'll I'll buy one from you guys oh (laughs) awesome (laughs) thanks man so maybe we'll maybe we'll send one over to you (laughs) yeah we'll we'll send you one gratis uh from from the rex podcast boys that as long as you you wear it during spring training (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but uh Awesome. So, Chamber, what, what do we got next here? Well, and that you got one more question here, and I, then I got have, the game. Yeah, you got the game. I, I, you know, it's October twenty eighth. I literally have like three more days to get this last drop. Um, Ty, one thing you may not know about me is I create all of the funny drops, uh, like sound drops for the show. It's uh, really his true calling. <laughs> it really is. And uh, I made one specifically for Halloween. I think we've only used it twice. Um, so I, this is you're my last opportunity uh, for for this year at least to use it. So uh, we would like to uh, to do a, a fun segment uh, that I've coined spooky stories on Wrecked Podcast. Spooky stories on Wrecked Podcast. Okay. Now, spooky stories on Rec Podcast. We like to ask our guest any you know at any point in the life, kind of similar to the real life Rec, but just a story. Uh, and I found this just talking with regular people is the more you talk about you know kind of the weird, mysterious, paranormal stuff, the more times I hear just people have these one off stories, um, and they're reluctant to tell unless you uh, unless you have one to tell them. Um, so I, I I had asked you if you had one. You mentioned you did. Uh, I, I we haven't heard this story yet, so. Uh, I'll leave the floor to you. What is your spooky story for us for the uh, Halloween season? Okay, um, I can't exact. I think I'm pretty sure I was eight. I was eight or nine at the time, um, and my grandparents lived in Illinois. I can't remember exactly where they lived, but so my younger brother, he. So if I'm nine, he's either five or yeah, five or six, and. They decided to take us, uh, so it's just us two, and then my grandparents, they decided to take us to uh, uh, the Navy Pier in uh, Chicago. So we go we go there, and for, I don't remember exactly, you know, what all it entailed, but at one point, we went to this, uh, this like, house of mirrors. Like, so it was just like a, a mirror maze, right? And, you know, my... Uh, at this point, like I was pretty much a babysitter already at you know at nine years old, my you know because you know my my parents worked and everything. And once we kind of got old enough to stay stay at the house and stuff, you know they they trusted us to be alone or whatever. But so my grandparents sent <laughs> let my brother and I go in here alone, and we're like in this mirror maze for a little bit, and we're already kind of uncomfortable because it's like all right, it's just us two in here, and there's just a bunch of mirrors. Like oh, this is weird. So we keep trying to like, we're kind of getting tired of being in there. So we keep, uh, we're like, all right, let's, let's get out of here. And so we, we start trying to like leave and we're, just, we're starting to like hit the mirrors and stuff because we're, you know, we, we have no <laughs> idea like where to get out. And we eventually like, we're both bawling our eyes out screaming. And then like, we, we start running, we start running and, eventually we find like this exit this like emergency exit and we go out like the side of the building but like it's like the side of the building where it just goes like to the water so there's like nowhere to go oh my god and we're like <laughs> uh so we're even more freaked out because we don't know anybody there and then we like so we run back in and we just keep we end up keep screaming and eventually like this family like 
bumps into us and like yeah the exit's like right over here guys like and they live in the <laughs> maze today that's right <laughs> i know and it's like and it's, I, I don't know if it i don't know but i remember at the time we were freaked out that's hilarious well you have to watch just based on that story alone have you seen the movie us by um jordan peele that is so weird that you just said that because my brother asked me that question like two hours ago amazing really? that's amazing <laughs> i have not seen it though so you got to watch it. It's okay. a great movie. It's it's actually one of um, if I don't know if you watched the uh, what was the other one? Uh, get the out last, by oh get out oh uh, yeah get out. That was yeah, Jordan Peele as well. Yeah, a lot of people consider that the the best one. I think Us is better in my opinion. I haven't really. seen that one either. It's fantastic, okay. uh, but it's got it, it'll be right up the um, the mirrored you know the mirrored. The, the 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 house of mirror um It'd be trippy, scares trippy like will, that. will be there for sure yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. you should definitely watch it that's okay. hilarious i have uh some pretty good memories or i mean scary memories of something similar we had a similar situation where our parents let us go in this haunted house thing and it was probably a little too intense for the age we were <laughs> and uh the end like it was one of those ones where you like you go into the haunted house thing in like a log flume or like a boat, you know, mm -hmm. and you go throughout this thing. And at the end, we were going through it with <laughs> uh, some family friends of ours and all four of us. It was just the kids, the same kind of scenario here. And uh, by the time we were pulled out of this thing, the our parents are sitting there waiting for us and all four of us are crying just absolutely really? <laughs> bawling our eyes out because there's nowhere for you to go in the ding uh lo you know no, in the log it's... flume boat so <laughs> oh man oh, that's man. funny that's crazy good stuff all right we got one more segment here and as you know on wrecked podcast we like to put uh the guests at competition with one of us so today i made up the game chamber and ty have no idea what it is but we are in the midst we just had a world series champion crowned last night we are also in the midst of a heated election season so we are going to play yes, we are we are, we are going to play baseball player or U.S. senator. Wrecked. Wrecked. Okay. <laughs> this is awesome. So I am going to give you some names, each of you some names of uh, some players, uh, either past or present, and you're going to tell me if it is a U.S. senator or a baseball player. Okay. Okay. Let's start with Ty. Okay. All right. We're going to – let's go with – Hmm. Let's go with Bob Hamlin. Bob Hamlin. Oh, Lord. Um, I'm going to go with baseball player. That is correct. Bob Hamlin is a baseball player. Thought I might get you stumped yeah, you on that too. one. Yeah. I thought uh, I might stump you on that I one. Flipped, I flipped the coin. Can't lie. Uh, <laughs> all right, Chamber. We've got uh, so it's one nothing tie here. Um, Chamber. I'm going with. Let's go with Phil Plantier. Oh well, Phil Plantier, uh, the senator for Rhode Island. I think it's like his fourth term now. Is that, that is incorrect. <laughs> Oh, well, he had me convinced. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Phil Plantier, also a baseball player. Damn it. All right. I thought if I said it with enough confidence, you would uh, you would believe me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. We got, we're going back to Ty here. Uh, Joe Manchin the thir third. That's definitely a senator. That is correct. That is the Democratic <laughs> senator from West Virginia. I'm sorry. Did you say his name was Joe Manchin the yeah. third? M A N C H I N. He's got to be a Republican, no? Not a Democrat. He, he's not. He's a Democratic <laughs> uh, senator from West Virginia. That's All right, Chamber. Here we go. Um, we're going with uh, Lou Ford. 
Oh, that's uh, Whitey Ford's uh, brother. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, Lou, his younger brother, played for Cincinnati, I believe, for maybe six or seven years. So I'm going to go baseball player. What? <laughs> I mean, you got it right. I don't, I don't know if any of that is true. <laughs> none, of the, none of the other stuff was correct. So I got baseball, though? There yes, that is correct. That, that is correct. Not Whitey Ford's brother. Not Whitey Ford's brother. Uh, hold on, I have to erase the ones I've already used here so I don't uh, go for doubles. Um, all right, we are up for tie. We're going with John Barrasso. John Barrasso. Uh, Senator. That is correct. Damn it. The Republican Senator from uh, Wyoming. And these John are uh, current senators, is that correct? Yes, uh, current. Okay. Right. They're current, yes. And uh, and current baseball players or not? No, I think almost all of them are. Uh, so Definitely I think I got this player. list oh, from okay. the 90s. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Chamber. You give me some of those 90s Blue Jays, man. I'm going to get every single one of them. I don't think I have Candy any. Candy Maldonado. <laughs> oh, that's a good. That's a throwback. I like that one. All right. Uh, we're going with Chamber. We're going with uh, Bill Cassidy. Bill Cassidy is no baseball player. He, that has to be a senator. That is correct. Ooh. All right. It's three to two here. It's getting close. That is the Republican senator from Louisiana. Okay. Um, All right. We are going with Ty here. We're going with Dave Fleming. Baseball player. Correct. Mm. I feel like that one was a little I feel like he knew that one. Yeah, it felt like he knew felt like he knew that one. Um, All right. Chamber. Uh We're gonna go with Cody Gardner. Oh sorry, Corey Gardner. Oh, Corey Gardner, I'm pretty sure, is a senator. Fuck. <laughs> is that correct? I, I yeah. think I actually knew that. Wow, I was surprised. I thought I'd get... I thought Corey Gardner was one I would get somebody Dang, on. I, I would have guessed baseball player there. Cody... Ah. I, if, if it was a Cody Gardner, I think I would have said baseball. Cody just seems like a baseball player name. Yeah, I'm, ah, man. All right. I'm 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 mad I didn't get... I didn't win that one. I feel all like right. I know the name Corey, Corey Gardner, though. We have... Uh, it is four... To three tie on this one. I'm gonna do one of those pimp walks on tie right now. Yeah. <laughs> I I already asked I already asked Bob Hamlin, right? Yeah. You did. That was okay. the first one. All right. Uh here we go. We're going with Jack Reed. Jack Reed. Jack Reed is a baseball player. That is incorrect. No. Jack Reed is the Democratic no. senator from Rhode Island. Oh, no. <laughs> it is a tie. Uh, well, so it's... Uh, no, Chamber has a chance to I tie here. I have a chance to tie here, yeah. Chamber has a chance to tie here. Uh, if we, if he does get this correct, after five questions each, we will go to extra names. I have extra names here. All right. Let's go with... Uh man, I'm gonna try to stump you here and see if I could get Ty the win. Let's go with hmm. Roy Blunt. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I can I, I'm trying to go by the name. Now That's Blunt. That's all you have lot, to go by. <laughs> Blunt <laughs> Blunt sounds a lot like Bunt, uh, which could be a baseball player. What's his first name again, sorry? Roy. Roy, that could go either way. I mean, Roy Halliday. That is true. I'm gonna go baseball player. That is incorrect. Damn. High wins. Oh, <laughs> ah, Roy Blunt. Me out. Roy Blunt. Yeah, strikes him out. I'm gonna pimp on the way back to the dugout. <laughs> strikes him out. Roy Blunt is the Republican center for for Missouri. Wow. Damn it. Show wow. me this, Missouri. So Ty is going to be the winner at four correct answers to three. Um, some notable mentions. We'll just uh, first one to first one to uh, shout it out here. Uh, Sean Estes, baseball player. Yes, <laughs> uh, Kevin Moss. That sounds like a baseball player. That is a baseball player. Damn. Uh, 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 John Tester. Senator. That sounds like a yeah. Senator, yeah. correct. Uh Ryan Ludwig. Definitely baseball like player. A, yeah, that does yes. sound like a baseball player. Baseball player. Yeah. Um Brian Schatz. 
Tough name. Uh... <laughs> very, very tough. So it could definitely go either way. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to go Senator. Senator. Yeah. Senator from Hawaii, actually. Yeah. Somebody with that last name works really hard, is probably like a, a real studious person. Oh, that's a you know, you know good assumption. Brother, He's had to brother overcome brother brother. hardships his yeah. whole life. Like yeah. a guy named a guy named Ty Hensley, uh, which is <laughs> you know, that seems yeah, that's like an all American. That's name, a right. baseball player right there. Yeah. yeah. Very it's actually quite similar to my real name. Um, it actually is, yeah. It, you know, um, which Chamber uh, Hensley. Yeah, cha- yeah. <laughs> 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 Chamber Hensley, yeah. Yes. Uh, that's why I said I would get a jersey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, two more here. Ron Wyden. Senator. Senators, correct. Jerry Moran. Definitely baseball player. Senator. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, but Ty is the champion. Four to three over Chamber, as it should be. Uh, Chamber, any of these ring a bell? Marcus Giles? Nope. <laughs> Brady Anderson? Nope. <laughs> Shane Spencer. Uh, no, no. So those were all baseball players that I felt that I was going to ask you because I felt like those were obvious ones that Ty would probably get. Um, one one day I'll get you to quiz me on the like ninety two to ninety four Blue Jays, mm, and you'll be Joe shocked. Carter. Oh, that's easy Ooh. one. <laughs> all right well that is gonna do it for us ty thank you so much for coming on this was a blast we really appreciate it uh before we get going let people know where they can find you either twitter or anything else you're working on that you want to guard uh, guide people to just uh let them know okay yeah i uh i just i have a uh, twitter instagram and uh well, I don't really use TikTok that much, but uh, it's all at Ty Hensley 17. So you can find me doing whatever on there. Awesome. We will uh, we will link those in the show notes, your Twitter, Instagram, and pe- where people can watch you twerk on TikTok. <laughs> and <laughs> if you want to see Ty Hensley twerk, go to TikTok, Ty Hensley 17. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but we do really appreciate it. Chamber, any last words here? No, nothing from me. Uh, thank you guys for both calming me down from my <laughs> absolute blind rage. Um, I really appreciate it. And thanks for uh, teaching me a little bit more about, uh, you know, the etiquette uh, within baseball um, and some of the, uh, you know, some of the uh, the rules and, and unspoken rules. Um, but I, I, I appreciate it. I, I feel like we're going to make a baseball fan out of you yet. It's going to happen. <laughs> it's going right. to happen. That's awesome. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for us. We will be back next week. Until next time, don't get wrecked. And that is financial advice. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. You can help support us by giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and become a wrecked patron by signing up for a monthly tier on Patreon.com. That's Patreon.com forward slash wrecked podcast. Don't get wrecked.